Hello, welcome to Lay Back with Beth Air. I'm Tom Haylock with Luke White. How are you, Whitey? I'm good, Tom. Coming off the week one, I thought it went quite well. We're going to be like Zaki, mate. Better for the run, better second up, I'll tell you what. But I just want to remind you what happened last week. Now, mm. as we get it up, this was great scenes. I'm going to make Argentia in race five oh, my best back. You're kidding. You know why? You're kidding. Because it's your best lay. <laughs> so this is exactly what this show is oh, about. Come on, mate. We'll have dinner on this off okay. to the side okay, as well. We'll, we'll. Hedge the bet out wide or something like that. Um, so yeah, that, that's where are we going. She will be um, not flower drum, probably like <laughs> Mrs. Palmer's or something like that. Argentia coming at Barb Raider, fifty to go. Barb Raider, Argentia's coming out. Are they hit the line? Barb Raider. You absolute beauty. <laughs> um, you owe me dinner, Whitey. I do. Uh, where are we going? Happy meal. No, no. No. It was close, though. A great wrap-up. Great debates last week, I thought. We had multiple that came within half a length. Uh, when we look at them, we had... You've obviously made Arge Argentia your best back. I made it my best lay, just for just for the highlights of the show, to be honest. Um, other way around, mate. Producers Don't, rang me after around. that and off offered me a pay rise. How about you? I doubt it. <laughs> uh, Sir Bailey, my best lay, didn't run a drum. Was very happy with that. Kiss on all four cheeks when as planned. But I think one of the highlights also was Cardigan Queen because we debated that quite well at the end. Uh, got incredibly close. I laid it. You were with it. I will not lay it again. I got away with one there. But that's what this is all about. Well, I tell you what, I'm looking forward to your wash up too. What happened last week on the exchange on Betfair because uh, there was plenty happening. Some huge odds, odds winners, some horses that traded very short and run that got beat. I can't wait for that. Um, what a Saturday we have of racing. Flemington All-Star Mile Day, Rose Hill Golden Slipper Day, five group ones in the All-Star Mile at Flemington. Let's get straight into it. Now, we're at Flemington, Whitey. We'll get stuck into the All-Star Mile first and yep. then we'll go through the entire Rose Hill card minus the midway. Um, All-Star Mile. So Flemington, we're on a good four. Rail out eight metres. Um, should be perfect weather as it has been in Melbourne lately. 26 degrees. I can't wait for this famous Randwick Mile. Uh, Flemington Mile, sorry. And um, I'm with Zaki. I think he's the horse to beat. And I can't see why you're going to come up with a lay for him. Um, his main danger, I'm Thunderstruck. Drawn mm -hmm. barrier one. Horrible yep. barrier for I'm Thunderstruck. Zaki's drawn wide. Jamie Carr on board. No issue with that for me whatsoever. As a horse that needs to build his own tempo, needs a strong tempo to win, I think he'll get that. And Jamie Carr can do that. He can roll forward. Jamie Carr can dictate from out there. Um, I think she can roll forward. Now, this what, what Zaki did first up was outstanding, really. He was meant to run 1,300-metre Group 1 in Sydney. He came down here. He was first up over a mile. We said, on the, we said oh, prior to the race that he was going to feel the pinch. Um, he did. That was expected. He's second up now. He's been aimed at this race. He's up to a mile. He was only beaten by Inspirational Girl there who had all the momentum whereas Zaki had to just blend into it and just had to get, weave runs and got clear and burst through. But Inspirational Girl meets Inspirational Girl four kilos better for that victory um, or that defeat. Now, I can't see him being beaten here. I think he's a great bet and I'm happy to take the price. He's clearly on top for me. 320 on uh, Betfair or 340 on Betfair at the moment. I'm... Uh, Jeez, I'm, I'm very keen. I think he'll win. You're bullish there. That's more than you said all last week, I'm pretty sure, in your <laughs> arguments. Uh, you've, you've done a bit of a M and m in 8 Mile there and just put my argument against me. But wasn't ready for the mile first up. I absolutely agree. Great pipe opener. I don't think it'll lose many admirers. I, I think, you know, that, that they'll be backing it. Um, just for the sake of an argument, obviously a very high-quality horse, but... Yes, out in that barrier, 15. Jamie will need to do a bit of work to make sure we get a spot. Uh, dominant SP profile. Pretty interested to see what the market does with it late. I think it's best, though, against the best opposition have been over 2,000 metres. Yep. Just my opinion. That's, that's when he's been aimed at that 2,000 yeah. metres, though, to be fair. Yeah. I, the Nisham stable is not exactly flying. You might have some st uh, stats on that later. Not 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 for me to knock someone in, the, in round one, but... <laughs> Knocked plenty of jockeys early last week. How many punters were disappointed with Om Thunderstruck drawing one, though? Because oh. that Om Thunderstruck is better than Inspirational Girl. If Om Thunderstruck gets into the clear, this is on for young and old. I also would just like to say that Sierra Sue and Pinstropped in it, but mm. Top Ranked would have won this by three lengths. Yeah, you're and filthy about Top Ranked. I am filthy. So I'm happy to oppose at those odds, mate, but certainly not hard against. Well, I'm Thunderstruck, John Barry One's just the, possibly the worst barrier for him. He will need luck, but if he does get it, he's the, the main danger. But Zaki, a very, very confident, mate. Let's head to Rose Hill. Five group ones. I can't wait for a golden slipper day. It's one of the best days on the racing calendar. 
We are on a soft seven at the moment. Some showers around. We'll see how the track plays. Rail out two metres. They were tracking wide last week. Temperature of five, uh, 25 degrees, so a bit muggy in Sydney. We're heading up for it. Let's start with race two, the listed Derby Munro Stakes, 1,200 metres for the three-year-olds. And, um, yeah, I'm uh, I'm backing I'm backing the favourite here in Mizzou. He's 2.30 at the moment, about 2.50 on Betfair. He's just so hard to fault. He's two from two since being gilded. He trialled like a star, Whitey. Prior to that first up run, he won well. I think he improved first up to second up. He won fantastically. Got no issue with barrier one at all because, as we saw last week, horses that cut the corner still won. They were getting off the fence last week. If it is fence bias, which it could be because they're back, or they tracked so wide last week, this horse just gets all favours from that barrier. He handles all conditions. He's flying. I'm fascinated to, to see why you're against him. Well, you're the Sydney man. You get the leg up on me here. You love your Sydney form. I don't do a lot of Rose Hill form, but I, wa- I did put a note here wondering how the track will play. Rail out two metres. Obviously, on Coolmore Day, they came quite wide. I was a little bit worried that uh, just off the fence, leaders rail might be hot. Um, but if you guarantee me that won't happen, I'll be pretty excited. But the, the best part about this is you and I actually going up for the meeting, so this will be fun. But There might be a lot of dinners yeah, going on. Uh, another one I'm not hard against, as he's hard to pot. Like, looking at it, I was like, wow, perfect map, not much speed, should get the perfect sit. I've got to make a case against a jockey who's going at 129% ROI in his last 50 races in Sammy Clipperton. Um Winning form is good form, both jockey and horse. Sounds like you're backing it, mate. Um, however, oh, I'm happy to is. make a case oh. for Chartres, who was scratched last start, and Smirnova. Uh, Smirnova, who has jumped out super, SP'd odds on at Mooney Valley when it should have bolted in, had no luck whatsoever. They're the dangers for mine. I wouldn't be surprised if Smirnova, there's a bit of money for it, and it comes into a lot closer than what it is now. Hard to be hard against, but two dollars thirty ish, I could lay it. I think the dangers of back in earlier ingratiating was fantastic in the um, Oakley Plate run fastest eight hundred and four hundred of that race. But yeah, Mizzou for me all day. Um, race three, the Queen's Cup, uh, previously the Manion Cup, uh, two thousand four hundred meters. You're with Surefire here. Yeah, uh, which is probably worth mentioning at time of recording. There's quite a few in this market at a very similar price. Um, but we'll stick with the ex-British gelding, who's got a little bit of the the Waller polish on it at the moment. Um, absolutely brilliant first up. First up in the country over 2,000 metres on a heavy 10, produced a big run, great figure. Found trouble in the run everywhere, uh, if you go back and watch it. Was on heels, had to come all the way around them, round them up, went straight past, and you don't see that often. That, that was very impressive. Uh, I think, you know, first up 2,000 to 2,400 metres, second up, I don't know how often that's a recipe for success. I haven't got the odds on it. You might. I've got Super Sammy on board, though, who I just Super mentioned. Super Sammy. Uh, down to He's fi- flying. Down to 53 kegs on its back. Won't know itself down there after coming over from Britain. Um I certainly give chances to uh, Zarek and Luntzies. The The thing here will be to make sure he stays close enough in the run uh, and doesn't let them get too far ahead. But I can definitely make a case to back this on Saturday. The $4.80 fixed quote, around $5, six, 5 $6 on Betfair, I think will get bigger on the day, though. I'm against Surefire. Waller with four in the race. Can you be confident? 2,400 nope. metre race with Waller with four. All similar prices. He's got no compromise. Yet to miss top three uh, at Rose Hill. Up to 2,400 metre suits. No compromise. Um, Zarek was dominant winner last time. Got to be respected. Now... I concede Surefire is a hard horse to be hard against. He's got upside. He's untapped. He's had that one run in Australia. It was a win. It, it was a big price there. Does that tell you anything? It's surprising for a Waller horse at a big mm. price to win like that. Um, this is a much harder race. And, uh, yeah, just happy to be against him in the Manion Cup, mate. Let's head to race for the Group 3 opponent stakes for the Phillies and Mares. And um, I am with Loot here. She's a mare in form, Whitey. She's um, currently $4.50 or about that on the exchange. And um, I'm happy to take that price for the class horse in the race. She's, you go, I originally thought looking at the map that she might struggle um, to get across and might need luck. And I was trying to find things to beat her when doing the form. But you go through it, there's nothing else in the race. Mm. Um, she's a mare in form. Um, Brock Ryan rode her perfectly, rated her sensationally last start. She's got a fitness edge on most of her rivals. Mares are off wins, just keep winning. 
any luck from that barrier, she just wins this. And I think she, uh, I think she can set a wide at Rose Hill. Um, look at the track last week. I don't think it'll be too disadvantageous. And uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm with Lude at that price. Yeah, on first glance, I thought it looked too short. Not a horse I wanted to take those odds about. Last start, it was impressive though, visually impressive. Um, First win though since John Howard ran the country. Um, The main problem is it's not a strong race though, like you mentioned. So even though I was quite happy to take it on initially, trying to get it beat, was the hardest part uh, when you're laying them. Like you would hope that there is multiple hopes in the race. There's a few of them that have become a little bit of nonnies, like uh, Harmony Rose, for example, um, who's well in the market. I I didn't like the race, to be honest. She's been to Rose Hill six times, never won. Uh, It's a bit of a knock. Uh, Wins rarely, but it was a visually impressive one last start. If there's any advantage to be up there as well, I think it could be hard to beat. I'm I'm against it. Those odds, the current opening odds. I think the only figure really that could beat is probably Galaxy Bell on that last last run. Um, I doubt I'll play in this race, but I'll, I'll take you on. No, oh, good. I like that. Now you've absolutely stitched me up in race five here. Group one, Rampant Stakes. We've got a very very short price favourite. Uh, she's a star, two thousand meter race, very elegant, and um, no surprise you're you're with her. And I've got to make a case against her. This will be good. Yeah, just for the viewers and the listeners, we don't actually choose this. It's, just, it's <laughs> random. This? It's random selection. <laughs> don't give me that. It's random selection. Uh, what can you say? The superstar, she did scare the punters though a little bit. Last start and the start before she had a flop. Uh, f- f- mm, she's ideal got very close last start. Um, how can you make a case again? She's the best horse in the race. Arguably our best horse in the country. Uh, and But he's... Priced accordingly. The biggest shame here, though, for this race is that it's a small field. There's not much opposition. Uh, She loves the track. She loves the distance. Super hard to knock. Um, Will I dive into $1.35? No. I think she'll be mighty popular, though, if she gets out to $1.50-ish on Betfair. Um, Like, one thing I would say is that the main opposition for me is Montefilia, which is in the market. Yep. She... Absolutely super in the shipping Norton. I would like to know how close it would have gone to winning if it had swapped runs. We're very elegant. Um, funny things can happen in small fields. Uh, she should just be too good. But don't be surprised if Montefilia gives a scare late. She said you should have been on the late side of that argument, mate. Yeah, you've, well, talked, you've talked me out of it. A dollar thirty-five. Um, I actually, wow. I actually think the dollar thirty-five dollar. If you get dollar forty on Betfair, I think that's value. To be honest. Well, um, that's what, that was my next question. When is she value? I think a dollar forty is value. Dollar fifty will be overs. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Um, but you, I've got to make a case to lay her and. Uh, yeah, I, I the, the advantage with Betfair, mate, liability. If you have a hundred at a dollar forty to lay her, you get a hundred dollars profit, and you only lose forty dollars. Mm-hmm. So yep. that's the beauty. Low liability here to, to lay her. Yep. Um, I what was there a length between seven runners in that chipping Norton? Dwyer should have beaten her. If Dwyer comes out and does beat her, um, she's probably a dollar fifty, dollar sixty here. Um. I thought she had favours last start. I mean, she's a hard horse to lay. She's an 11-time Group 1 winner. Um, but it's all about price. Dollar thirty-five is probably around the right price. And um, I ha- don't know if I've made a case to lay her or not, but there you go. <laughs> um, good luck to those taking the shorts. Uh, race six, before we get to the weekend wash-up, is the Rose Hill Guineas, another Group 1. Animo is favourite, about that dollar ninety-five, $2 mark. Um what am I doing? I'll, I'll lay Animo, and for good reason, mate. I, how's he going? Is he going as well as last campaign, and is he priced on what he did last campaign? Mounting yard people say he's skinny, he hasn't eaten, he's not as strong and muscly as he was last campaign. He was beaten by Converge last start, con- lines up against Converge, and he's shorter than him in, in the market again. I think he's priced on hype still. Um, 2,000 suits him, and... I can make a case for a couple of horses down from Melbourne to beat this horse. Profondo forgot you. Um, I, I do think he can beat Converge Animo. Don't get me wrong. I think he can turn the tables on Converge from what they did last start. But I wouldn't be surprised if Profondo comes through that Australian Guineas and really sparks and improves dramatically. Wobbled around the corner. There was good money for him, um, suggesting he'd come back well. He trialled well prior. Complete forgive first up. I think he can win. Uh, what he did last campaign is good enough to, to definitely beat Animo here. Forgot use the other one coming down from Melbourne. Interesting runner. is a real line chaser. Now, 
Melbourne horses. Obviously, it's been wet in Sydney. We saw the Melbourne form stack up last week. Um, I just worry about how much work has been put into these Sydney horses with the huge floods and the, the rain around and the heavy tracks. Are the Melbourne horses coming across the border with a fitness edge? They've had more work work put into them. Um, Dollar ninety five, two fourteen to lay. I'm laying Animo again. Um, he's done me the favours last uh, last start, and I'm uh, yeah, I'm against him. Mate, who trains Animo? Cummings. What stable? What crew? What crew? Well, where's where's the horse come from? Do you honestly think <laughs> this horse has been sitting in a wet paddock? <laughs> no. James Cummings would be running it around the backyard in Coogee. Maybe on treadmills, um, all sorts. But so uh, I don't doubt that. But when under it ran, we get similar odds last start, which may scare the price out a little bit, I think. Uh, obviously a great horse. This might be its last chance we get this type of quote, though. Um, the key now is the step up to 2,000 um, and the track isn't as wet. Uh, J-Mac hopefully will have to be a bit more positive this time um, and hopefully just be too strong late. If I look at others in the race, you mentioned Forgot You. I was on last start in Melbourne. I'm just not sure if it's got the same turn of foot. Um, I definitely think it'll be there for a long way. Profondo, it's hard to make a case for based off what we saw last start. On talent and hype and all the rest of it, if it won, it would not surprise me at all. Uh, Obviously, though, uh, Robbie just gave up on it and pulled it up. Yep. Uh, during the last start, we'll pull it up, not, you know, as well. <laughs> um, <laughs> Converge is non for two races. We find out today it's in this race, which is good. Uh, beat Animo fair and square last start. But I like the setup and distance. I think he'll sit closer. Could I take $1.90? No. But at two thirty, looks like I could, I could bet. There you go. Well, segment three, time for the wash-up, my favourite segment of the show. Can't wait what you've got in store, mate, from last week. Mm, well, what have we got? We've got a few a few headlines here, close ones. Um, Nana Gooey and Cardigan Queen, ones that we were both arguing for and against. Both were the lowest uh, traded in play horses yep. for the for the meet. Uh, both hit one dollar twelve in the run. Um, obviously, Cardigan Queen was a bit sick. Nana Gooey was flying, just didn't get there. Uh, second of all, blowouts. Ooh. Blowout. Rock and horse. Wow. Yeah. Max pre play, $180. BSP, $140. In play, $110 and wins. Uh, what did it pay on the um, on the corporates and tote and Yeah, I'm not sure. I think it was $120 yep. around there. Um, glistening, $27 pre play high. Firmed 21% in the last three minutes. BSP's at $11.80. Hits $26 in play wow, wait. and wins. Uh, so there's a couple of blowouts good for little, you. Good little firm light there. Yep. And uh, in play monsters, mate. In play monsters, a new segment from me. Um, I, like I was this. having a look at the data. I thought the viewers and listeners might be interested. At Flemington, there were 15 runners that hit $2 or less in the run and lost. Uh, the average BSP of that group, Tom, Um, Highlighting the difference in the exchange product and the opportunities you can. It's not always just about finding the winner. You can do things where you back, you lay, you get yourself into some good positions. Biggest highlight I found, though, was top honours in race nine. Pre-play high of $410. (laughs) SPs at $240. Hit $1.86 in the run. Kicked at the 200, finishes ninth. (laughs) <laughs> um, who's taking the dollar 68 about a dollar 86 it hit but like do- at, i think uh maddie call maddie hill calls it at like the 200 it looks like it's kicking and then it just gets swamped and finishes ninth so in the in the form guide it'll say finish ninth but on betfair it'll tell you that it hit a dollar 86 for 80 percent of the race yeah and it was 200 odd fantastic mate great segment well played let's get to race seven head back to rose hill the george rider the group one forbidden loves the favorite and um yeah, <clears throat> does she deserve to be favourite, Waddy? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, against her? Mudlark, genuine swimmer. I'm against. <laughs> Uh, she was fantastic when on the quick backup last start, though, I will say that. Uh, she looks a good fresh horse. Set up has gone 1,400, back to 1,300. Now we're at 1,500. Bit interesting. She doesn't get a heavy track that we we're expecting. Now, in saying that, 
We're heading up to Sydney. Uh, we are. You yeah, never you're know. Shout me dinner. You That's never why. know what we're going to get in Sydney. Uh, it could absolutely <laughs> downpour. We could be on a heavy ten. Could be a good four. Nobody knows. So we'll have to completely monitor this. Uh, when I was doing the form last night, and we were doing the film. Converge was in the market. Comes out now, yep. which is obviously. Uh, was one of the main chances. So keen to monitor track pattern at this time and if there's been any rain up there. But at this stage, I'm against her at the price and I think Mwanga is a big chance on Saturday. You've stitched me up here with this because you said last night or yesterday when the fields came out and you said, let's debate Mwanga. And then about 10 o'clock last night, you've texted me going, all right, we're changing, we're on Forbidden Love. <laughs> You've stitched me up. Yeah, well, um, Forbidden Love's the true favourite, and that's what this show's about, so we've got to stick with it, and you've got to do some work for your money. Well, um, Forbidden Love, she's a deserved favourite, mate. She's got the form through the Coolmore winner. She beat that horse comfortably. That horse came out and won very well. She's a wet tracker. She's a mare in winning form. I've said this before. The more you win, the better odds you get with these mares. She's flying. She doesn't have to lead. She draws to get a perfect run, irrespective um, Annabelle Nisham Stable, you mentioned it, not going that great. And he mm. keen on Mwanga. Um, he's, won, he's a second favourite Mwanga. He's won one from his last eight. He's got to mm. do it now. Forbidden Love, she's absolutely flying. Um, I'm happy to be with her in the George Rider at race seven. Now, it is time for the big one, the Golden Slipper. I can't wait for this race, and I'm going to get you to go first again here. The favourite is Cool and Gadda. Now, she hasn't done anything wrong, but tell me why you're against Cool and Gadda. Hasn't done anything wrong. The big boom horse, if we will. Um, where's she been? Yeah. Where's she been? <laughs> um, we have a form line through the Gold Coast. I'll tell you where she's been in a minute. <laughs> Don't worry. Uh, we've got the form line through the uh, the Gold Coast. Come back fresh here. Then I've got, got to do the heavy 10 Sydney form, and then I've got to line up the good track form in Melbourne. And I don't doubt that this stable's absolutely got her ready to go, though. There's, we, we, let's, not, let's not doubt this stable whatsoever. Obviously been a target the, a long way out. We'll be firing. I found it tricky, though, to assess all of it and what was a good price and what wasn't. Um, when we're there on the day, though, Tom, and having a quiet beer... I think I'll be. I won't let it go around a loser, especially if we're getting five plus dollars. I think it's certainly one that we can you would save regardless at those odds. But you know I like pain, and <laughs> I was big on Jack and O in the Blue Diamond, yeah. and it should have won. Yes, it should have won. Um, the actual <laughs> data and figures are out of the Blue Diamond could end up being the best form of this race. Like. I'm trying to find where the best horse is. So a, a, a blowout wouldn't surprise me. Cool and Gatter winning by three lengths wouldn't surprise me. Um, but Jack and O gets the blinkers. Uh, great run last night. Completely wound up. Has to handle the uh, Sydney way of going. But I'm cheering Jack and O to knock Cool and Gatter off. You might be happy to know I've got Jack and O second in my selections at the moment. But Cool and Gatter is clearly on top for me. She's a star. She's done nothing wrong. She's three from three. Um, the stable, they, they do it time and time again. Now, horses first up, no issue whatsoever. They, we saw it with Hitotsu winning the Australian Guineas over a mile first up, despite a betting drift, remarkably. Won that race, you trust the stable with whatever they do. This horse just being kept uh, away from the really heavy tracks in the lead-up. Um, word is, uh, been working at Newcastle on the firm tracks out there. And So here um, you go, you've got to be in the know. That's, you got, that's right. You've got to be a Sydney form analyst. That's right. So she's, they poured the work, work into her. The Phillies have been dominant since day one. We've been waiting for a, a horse since her trial. Now, she came out one on debut back in October. Since her trial, Whitey, there's been no horse that has challenged her or said, yep. here I am, I am the next two-year-old that's going to win the slipper. Mm -hmm. She's been her all along. She's had that mantle. She's come out. She won first up in uh, in Queensland. She won the Magic Millions. She's got a nine-week break. No issue whatsoever. She's clearly the horse to beat. But it is a fascinating golden slipper because of that. We've got a filly, a favourite first up in a race. You've got heavy track form onto a firm track. We've got... Horses like Fireburn that have come out and won well on heavy 10s. Mm. If it was a heavy 10 again, you could make a case for Fireburn. Yep. Um, I concede, and I made this point before, I concede that the Melbourne horses have a chance here, and that's why I've got um, Jack and O in the mix. I think he's clearly the one out of that um, blue diamond with the blinkers going on. He ran the fastest 400 and 200 of that race. But Colin it. it's all about her. I think the map's perfect, and she'll be winning the Golden Slipper. Let's head to the last uh, group one, the Galaxy. What a race this is. Big field, hot pace. And You've missed one, mate. What have race I missed? Race nine, Isotope. 
That is the uh, that's the galaxy, mate. That's not the last race. No, not the last race. Yeah, but race nine is the galaxy. Race ten because there's yes. ten races. Um, the galaxy, and um, I don't know how I got stitched up with Isotope here. I'm not too keen to to be <laughs> on him, but anyway, um, on her, she's a star now. Not sh- what more can she do, mate? She's missed a top two finish once in her career, aside from when she lost the rider on Magic Millions Day. We've We've seen the away for away game form stack up fantastically in the Oakley Plate. Now, away game came from that Magic Millions where Isotope trounced her. She's come through and got close to Murabi, who's undefeated. Three from three on soft tracks. Um, I'm, I can't make a case against her. Um, I'm not sure the price. Price is probably about right in the big field. Yep. Um, she's an X-Factor horse, but she hasn't done anything wrong and I can't lay her, so I'm with her. All right. Price a big key here. I mean, how's the speed map? Uh, There's good, a lot of speed. Yeah. Good luck if you nail it. It looks like a genuine minefield to me. Um, isotype 63 days between runs. Has there been any jump outs? Uh, not that you, not that we know of. Not that I and have. I, I've asked and a I'm couple ex- of Queensland guys. They said no. So uh, And I'm expected to take $4. Um, I think the market drifts. It's hard to knock her form towards the end of last prep. Um, but you can have that price, Tom, if you want it. Uh, once again, one, we don't want to get a caught in a trap, though, where we lay it and we get stuck with this huge you drift. You could end up with $10. Who, like, you just yeah, don't know. You just don't know. So it's one of those races. Uh, $4 isn't for me. Interesting to see, though, how far it drifts. Uh, the hardest of its test to date, I think, and I give chances to 27 of them. <laughs> Found the race too hard. Uh, but you can have a mate. A couple of three-year-olds. We've got Malkovic and Brooklyn Hustle. Away game, obviously. Um, big tempo. I'll talk about uh, a bet in that race coming up soon. Now we're at the last, mate. Race 10, the birthday card, the group three. Yep. 1,200 metres. Um, you are with the favourite in Steinem. I am. I've drawn the backside. Um, and I'll try and finish off to making a case for it. Um, currently joint favourite as we speak at Ma- with Mallory, though. Yeah. So, but we'll stick with it. Plenty of positives, Tom. Uh, the stable could train a rocking horse to win a race at the moment. I loved the jump out. J-Mac on. I didn't train rock and horse, mate. <laughs> uh, yeah, rock and horse. Um, <laughs> J-Mac on. Ticks galore. My only the, – the, I'm on the back side of the army. The only slight query I have is 1,200 first up might be a little bit too sharp. I think when backing it, I'll wait, and, wait until late. And it could be one of these ones. We mentioned a few last week, but it could be an in-play, an in-play bet. Um, it's had a few tardy starts. If you go back to the Empire Rose, it missed the start and had to absolutely fly home. Uh, J-Mac will have to be close enough. If it's close enough in play, I think it's an in-play bet. Um, but I, I definitely think it'll give the backers a good run for their money. I That doesn't sound too confident. I'm laying this horse um, hard to lay the stable, as you said. But we've got a miler, even a 2,000-metre horse, first up, 1,200, on a slow tempo. Ruby mm. Tuesday looks the leader. There's no speed in the race whatsoever. They might dawdle. Do you reckon J-Mac will care about a group three after he's just won the slipper on Cool and Gatter, mate? Probably he'll be, not. He'll be thinking about the showers. He'll be drifting back, just yep. getting the day over. He'll be yep. going around for a bit of fun. Now, 58, mayor conceding weight to the rest of the field. Wet track, first up. Not for me. You can have a yep. Steinem. Um, I'm against with the map, the tempo, everything I just said, I'm against her. So that wraps up all the races. It's time for the best bets. Um, have you got one for us? I know you oh. found it tough to come up with one. Yeah, I, I'm struggling because I even I even wanted to initially make best bets for things I've made LA arguments for, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, it's, it's incredibly hard. Very elegant? Uh, no, I think... <sighs> I'm trying because I'm trying to go for value. I don't want to make something odds on my va- uh, yeah. my best back of the day. So I'm going to make my best back bet back a bet Moanga. Ooh, I give Jack and I a chance too, though. Yep. And I'm going to lay. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to lay isotope. Um, yep. at four dollars. I don't mind that. At four dollars. With the speed map the way it is, I think it'll be a bit of a rough and tumble race. I don't think it'll be very easy. I'm happy to late first up off that break, but concede it's a massive chance. I think Isotope's unders as well at the moment. Yeah. Um, she can win, but uh, might drift. My best bet is Zaki in the All-Star Mile, race six, number two at Flemington. Gee, I think he's going to be hard to beat. Second up, 1,600 metres again. Fitness edge, weight turnaround, inspirational girl, and the second favourite, Strawn Barrier 1, and we'll need the world of luck. Um, so, Zaki, the best bet for me, I'm laying Steinem. For all the reasons I just said, yep. 
Um, J-Mac won't care about race 10 on the day at 6 o'clock. Do you want to cap your price, though? Because it opened $4.80, and I thought that was very short. Yeah, you I might reckon get you'll get $7. Dollars. Yeah, so um, I'll cap it at uh, $6.50. Why okay. not? Right. Um, anything over that, you could consider back it. But four eighty, five dollars $5 looks very, very skinny. Yep. Um, with the big weight, 1,200 first up with no speed on. So that's my lay of the day. I think that's all we've got time for, Whitey. Thank you. I think we're better second up like Zaki will be. I think so. I think so. Well, speak for yourself. I thought I was awesome first up. <laughs> I listened to us on Spotify quite a few times. Every time I went for a coffee just to get the views up, listens up. Um, but, mate, now I'm excited. We're heading up you, to the slipper. You, you told me you didn't like looking at yourself, mate. <laughs> we, uh, we're off. Hence, hence the Spotify. Yeah. Listen we're to off. yourself rather than you. We're off to the airport. Let's have a beer and head to the slipper and good luck to all the punters. Fantastic. Thanks for joining us. Lay back and enjoy. We'll be back to do it all again next week. Gamble responsibly. Call 1-800-858-858.